You are listening to Power Stance Gamers Podcast, the best place for quality tabletop banter. With your hosts, Jacob, Greg, and Muddy. G'day everyone, Jacob Connor here from Power Sense Gaming. With me tonight, we have Mr. Greg Millsop. Hey listeners. Mr. David Muddy Muddyman. All right. And joining us for this special review episode, we have uh, Mike Carl. How hey, you doing, Mike? I'm good. Thanks, guys. Before Thanks, we man. get in any further, how's Mimic Games going, buddy? Yeah, it's going good. Um, you know, just chugging along, selling things to the locals as I wanted yeah. it. Muddy just found your Batman bottle opener. It amazes, <laughs> it amazes a lot of people. <laughs> Especially little DC fanboy bitches. Yep, yeah. Bit of a fat. Although, you know, I would, I would appreciate more if you didn't like that atrocity of a film, Batman vs. Superman. I just... Oh, You're not really going like to win it. this argument. Not with him. <laughs> Is that, I mean, apart from I'll Martha, give up. Martha. that's the only bit. The rest of it's quite good. Did you see the Deadpool cart um, comic where he's fighting the Punisher? No, it doesn't no. legitimise your claims <laughs> that someone from Marvel writes does a skit on it. Yeah. It doesn't legitimise it at all. Deadpool's going to kill Punisher and basically stops because of Martha's the same, same, same mother's name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That works. And, and the Punisher goes, I don't know whether you, you're serious or not. It's like, I can't tell, Wade. Yeah. Are you pumped for uh, Justice, Justice League? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Still going to see it by yourself? Well, they're going to they get eight tickets out in Australia. Hey? Hey. Oh, my God. I'm surrounded by Marvel <laughs> no, Universe. No, I'm a DC guy, man. I'm, as my key ring denotes. Yeah, I'll yeah. be going to Justice League for sure. So you haven't been either? Well, it was released uh, Thursday. Well, why don't we do what we did last time? There we go. We went to your. We had a it had a feed there with slop stuff. Oh yeah, that was yeah. me. Uh, you, you dragged me to Batman versus Superman. No, no, no. That was it. Um, no, that was at North Lakes. We oh, went yeah. down Strathpine. to Strathpine. That's right. And we went and watched. Oh, far right. That's gone back a bit. Deadpool. Yes. Yes. Yep. Yes. And so you take him to see a good film, and drag me to see Batman versus Superman. That's how it works, mate. Tell you what, Deadpool's a bunch of dick jokes. After you get past the dick jokes, there's not much there. Yeah, I watched it the other time, uh, the other night, and um, it's got no replayability. Yeah, it's got zero. Got well, good yeah. movie straight up, but Thor was really good. Thor I haven't seen the new Thor. Yeah. Like Thor. Thor Ragnarok was Thor is sweet. Is I saw it twice. It's the first time I've seen a Marvel movie in the cinema twice. Yes, yeah. really well worth it. Yeah, surprising how good that movie was. I'm I'm still really interested to see whether the the jokes would translate to the US market. Because yeah, it's well, well, Kiwi humour. Yeah, I read an IGN review by an American. And yeah, they're like he was very critical on the on the on the humour. Yeah, and so yeah, I think it wouldn't translate necessarily too well to some markets. Uh, the character the director played, um, the, no, the blue good. guy. Um, yeah, yeah, what his name was, yeah. Because he he was basically just being himself, like yeah. just this Maori comedian guy. And he's like, and like all the bro jokes. It's like, yeah, are they gonna get that? Yeah. I mean, we get it because we've got the cultural. Yeah. Um, Distance there, not yeah. But like we we can get a lot of things. Like yeah. we get English. We watch English movies. We watch Yank movies. We watch you know our own. We watch Kiwis. Like we 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 multitask in some format. Whereas those guys are just so insular, they don't get anything else. Well, yeah. Like well, the Metacritic score speaks for it. It's like eighty on the Metacritic. About I would have gave it ninety. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's that. It's averages out, but yeah. But you know what I find really funny that um. They're surprised that Blade Runner flopped. It's like... Oh, it's flopped, has it? Well, it didn't flop at the box office. It's a fantastic film. Yeah. Just like the first one. But it's such hard sci-fi that it's not going to appeal to the mass market. And it's no. three hours, which doesn't help. Yeah, it's it's not a science fiction movie for the average popcorn movie But then, movie goer. the original Blade Runner was, again, miles... Like, at the, at the time, the original Blade Runner mm. came out, it was too far advanced it was. for yeah. the, the populace at the time. So I had to cut, cut it down to, and then... They screwed it up and it flopped. Yeah. History repeated itself. And yeah, that's why exactly. Ridley, Ridley Scott did the you know the director's cut and the definitive divisions and all that's, that sort of stuff because he he's trying to tell the story he wanted to tell. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't think played around as a it's a cinema film. Like it's one you want to sit and deconstruct over time. And well, that's why it flopped. And get into well, yeah, it. It's it's still scored amazingly by the critics, but the average so popcorn. It's, it's a movie for the fans. Well, even the likes hard sci-fi, it's like the first mm-hmm. good hard sci-fi that we've had in a long time. Yeah, that's you know, like most of it's been you know Independence Day two and shit like that. It's, I don't know. Did you have you guys seen it? Independence two, yes. Yeah. No, Blade Runner. Oh, Blade no. Runner. No. 
No. I highly recommend it. I'm about to go rewatch Blade Runner. Yeah. And there's an thing. animated thing that's uh, that's taken a few years after or something. Yeah. After, yeah so I'm going to go rewatch watch that as well. Before I go see. Yeah, 2049. It's fantastic. Yeah, well, okay. while we're talking about um, Dick... <laughs> Why are you looking Sorry. at me? <laughs> Philip K. Dick, the author of Blade Runner. Yeah, okay. Have you guys seen Scanner Darkly? Yeah. No. No? Keanu Reeves, and it's the cell shaded animated one. Oh, man, I should lend it to you. It's a mind trip. I've seen it for many years. It's a good movie. Yeah, so good. What's it what, called what, again? What is this? A Scanner Darkly. This isn't the Matrix. No, no, no. Because no. so, I know there was some spin to that or something. Well. It's one of those films that they could, they never thought they could make. Because one of the key elements of the story is that the like the agents for the government agents essentially wear these suits that every half a second changes what they look like. Ah. Oh. So they're constantly changing who they are. So you never know who these agents are, and that's why one of the reasons that it's animated is so they could bring that dissonance yep. with the characters to life. Yeah. Its animation style is really unique too because it's parts of, most of it's filmed. But they've applied like an animated filter over the top of it, yeah. so it's still yeah. very realistic. It's 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 quite unique. It's, it's really it looks really good. It's like the only movie I know that's done that. It's oh. fantastic. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Oh, that's really. Anyway, sorry. So this is coming way from off topic. On. This comes from the man that's seen this movie, which we've never seen, and you've never seen Aliens. Yeah, something wrong with you. No, I only watch good it's films. Very, I yes. keep telling you that. Oh, Jesus. <sighs> keep bizarre. telling you. It's it. just incredibly bizarre. When I get through my Netflix backlog, I'll watch it. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna like take that it never ends though. Just, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, totally. Do you promise? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Special tape. <laughs> Double sided. Double sided. Get <laughs> some clockwork orange <laughs> eye pieces in there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm keen. <laughs> so, gents, what have we been up to? And there's only one answer I really want to hear about that. Yeah. What happened Saturday night? <laughs> You can't remember, can you? Yeah, not really. Where's he, where do you start? We had our first organised event. Yep. Power at Stands brewery. Drinking. At brewery. At Brendale Brewery. I drunk beer. You oh, did. Yeah. I, for the first time in my life, I saw Muddy drink a beer. Heavy oh, beer. no, hang on. It wasn't quite beer. It was heavy That's beer. Just, no, it wasn't. It was a shandy. <laughs> <laughs> you had a shandy. <laughs> <laughs> he, he he gagged down a cider before that. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> but I'm yeah, like, sorry. Looking yeah. at the thing, I'm like, what do you got? And then this, oh, we got beer, we got beer, we got beer, and oh, wait, 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 we got beer. The brewery had. Yeah, beer. but they fucking told me. Oh, this, oh yeah, they got this and they got that. Oh, I'm sure they got something for you. Yeah, <laughs> fucking beer, fucking yeah. beer, fucking Shandies. beer. Shandies, Shandies all night, mate. <laughs> oh. <laughs> God. So what we did, we uh, we rocked up at Brendale Brewery. We uh, had some casual games and um, we did caught up with some some listeners. And, we did. Uh, it was good fun. It was good great times. fun. Good catching up with the blokes. Um, so joking hazard went down well. The that side night happiness card game. That was yep. funny. That was good. We played a little bit of Cards Against Humanity. Uh, that but that was getting late, so we were pretty bit, loose. Bit by then. Then. Yeah, because yeah, I'd had a couple of beers by then. Yeah, shandies. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, and Skull was surprisingly tactical. Was that the Mexican thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was good, Greg. Was I, got the quickest, game. I got the quickest win in history. <laughs> Two hands. Two hands that literally Won went game. to me, me, and I went boom, boom. Game over. <laughs> Cheers, Greg. <laughs> was he to your left? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'll go, I'd go, what was it? One or something? Yeah. <laughs> One. And you'd go, oh, no, nah, not doing it, not doing <laughs> it. <laughs> So yeah, that was that was fun, and um, of course we had our first giveaway for our Patreon backers, and uh, Jesse was the lucky one walking away with a uh, purple Power Stance Gaming T-shirt that's uh, going to be signed by the crew, and we get it to him. So purple, yeah, he requested purple. Oh really? Oh, oh, right. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that's the only thing we had purple, but there you go. I was gonna say, yeah. Oh mate, we can get whatever color you want. Fucking yeah, good shit. Well, that's, much, that's much power you guys got. I oh, know. That's it. That's how I we think roll. I think big shout out to the, the lads that came along too. Yeah. Everyone that was involved, it was a really good night. Yep. And, um, Jesse. Oh, I saved Chad star. Saved his phone. I left it on the back of his ute. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Got to Eaton's and it was still there. I'm like, buddy, your phone. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. yeah. Wait, it was in the tray. 
on sitting the tarp. on top of it on the tarp. How does it stay on top? I do not know. Wow. He's a very steady hand on the wheel, yeah. obviously. Yeah. 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 He does drive 10Ks on the speed limit everywhere he yeah. goes. So. <laughs> well, it works out. <laughs> So yeah, that this. was good, and eat until, yeah. and um, i got to say, Jesse is in luck because the Power Sense Gaming t-shirt is a conversation starter and a half, isn't it? Did it actually start the conversation, or did Greg promote the conversation? Well, not with anyone I wanted to talk to, but, yeah. you know, people came up to me and asked <laughs> what the hell was on my shirt. Oh, they were asking you, were they? <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Was that the one upstairs? Uh, there was a couple downstairs, downstairs as oh, well. Right. Yeah. And uh, one of the, the barmaids, but not the one we wanted to talk to. <laughs> so they haven't right. seen a uh, naked Roman or an x wing pilot or a pit boy on that? No, apparently not. <laughs> the fact that no. they didn't believe it was us. They didn't believe it was muddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they true. did not believe yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, no <laughs> way. That guy <laughs> is such a loser. <laughs> <laughs> But it was a good night. It was it was had, and uh, I'm really looking forward to whatever we decide to do next. Yep. So yeah, I was bummed that I missed that. I had a thirtieth had to go to. It's oh, up. it's three zero. You can't miss thirtieths. Like you got to go to those. Well, yeah. we went to a twenty first. We did. Oh, twenty first. That's right. Apparently, yeah, that did not make any sense. I th- yeah, I don't know how many times we had to sh- show her the the song where the sign was. She thought we were in a restricted area. All right. Yeah. Yep. Uh, eight times. But we were just watching the barmaid put her fingers in the glasses. <laughs> Doing this, Mike. Cool well, at least we can say we did eat and sell. We didn't do it last time. We took that box. Yeah, we've been there. We've done that. We went there that other time. Oh, we, 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 we were there had, for we had, like We had a pizza five. and then we buggered off. Into did, you, the yeah. did you get two for one drinks that night? We did. We did. Yeah, we walked in. Oh, that's the first yeah. thing. Yeah, like, what the there's there's a bit of a story about that because we walked in and like, okay, what do you want? Money's like, oh... Oh, oh, I'll have a Maduri. And then the barmaid gave him shit for like five minutes. Like, she, she, <laughs> she did. stood there and made fun of him for ordering this drink. And then she must have felt like, <laughs> then she's yeah. just going, oh, wait. <laughs> and then she, she goes, goes oh, let me I'll, tell you, this I'll make you this drink. And it was like, it was Smyrna Black and Maduri. Yeah. Like, and it was, and she's like, oh, they're two for one. So I'll make you two. And then she's like, that's 10 bucks. So looking at like seven standard drinks yeah, just poured out. Yeah, yeah. So Greg and I were like, Oh, we'll have that too. <laughs> we stood there and looked at you and went, Are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to have this girly crop as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good start. So, um, I think, yeah, there's, I think there's a photo of us all, uh, holding up our yeah. kryptonite. Yeah. You were calling it. It was yeah. great. That <laughs> no, was good fun. Those two for ones are so good. It's just, you just get hammered like in an hour. Yeah. Yeah. We, <laughs> yeah, we can, we can believe it. We thought yeah. it walked into heaven. That's good. And then the music started. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Back on track, it was, yeah, good night. I had a, had a great time, and it's always yeah. fun just go out and go drink with you lads, and yep. good to catch up with some fans, and, yep. and yeah. And yeah, watch Greg lose his shit over Uber. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't lose my shit. It was the fact that I had to download this stupid app. It annoyed me. <laughs> that was it. That was it. annoyed me. To be fair, it is hard to download apps and knock your 30 15s. Yeah. <laughs> He's still playing Snake. <laughs> Snake too. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> oh, fun. So yeah, we'll um we're definitely plan in something in the new year and look at what we can do. And um, I think one of the plans is to do something that connects here, if I'm not mistaken, as maybe our next yeah. event. Go so whether that's a, a meet and greet or our drinks and feeds and games or game do a live recording, who knows? We yeah. might sort something out there. And, and I'll let people know. Yep. So. Sounds All like right. a plan. So, should we get on with the review? Yeah, why not? Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, 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 uh. You are listening to Power Stance Gamers. And now, this. All right. So, gentlemen, what is the purpose for our gathering tonight? Who can let us? Who can let the audience know? That's usually your job, buddy. Is that I, my job? I was job? trying to throw to you. Um, I forgot your name very briefly. Shadespire. Shadespire? Is that how you pronounce it? It is. Shadespire. Yeah. Warhammer, Underworlds, Shadespire. Yeah. So I thought it was going to be different to... to we, we just, we've just played it. I, I thought it was going to be very different to what it turned out to be. 
Which is a good thing. I think that's the general consensus. Yeah. Everyone who's I'm, played it is expecting something completely different, I'm, and they walk away with like, wow, wow, what was this? Pleasantly right. surprised. Before we get too much further, yeah. I think Greg's got all the details for us. As he usually does. Ooh, okay. So, made by uh, our favourite uh, gaming company, G-Dub. Uh, did we agree on that statement, or...? Favourite uh, gaming company? Well, it's why, how we all started, generally, isn't it? So, it's got to be a favourite. Really? Yeah. So, G-Dub's your favourite? Um, your favourite. Your favourite. Yeah, well, I'm going to... Yeah. Well, look, the, they're they don't, the, they don't biggest, have... the biggest in the world, and they're kicking goals. But they're all plastic, and they've got uh, no sprues. I don't just play any of the games. There's not enough tactical rocks. <laughs> I don't have any yeah. tactical rocks. Yeah, I don't, I don't play any of the games, but you gotta, you got to, like, hats off to them. They're yeah. um, a world leader. All right, I'm, I'm, let's go around the circle, Muddy. Yep. My favourite company. Yeah. Victrix. Victrix. Yep. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that. I thought you might say Mantic to shoot me. <laughs> no, I, 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 like, I like Victrix. I like are they Victrix. miniatures or, or they do rules as well? No, just miniatures. Oh, okay. Mm. It's historicals. There's a thousand different rule sets out there. Yeah, okay. You just can't find anyone to play. <laughs> Mike? Oh, I'd say Fantasy Flight Games. Yeah. They're three quarters of my paycheck goes to them, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, they, they better make good games, so. No, I, I like Wizard the Most Diverse. They're, not every game they make is just solid. And they have fantastic support. They listen to the public and actively update their games. Yeah, so. I've got, I've got to agree. Fantasy Flight's my favourite. Just, yeah, it, quality. I've not had a bad, I've never bought something from them that I've gone, oh, that's no. not great. Apart from X Wing, but that wasn't the game. You know what I mean? Huh? Well, X Wing, I uh, I only gave X Wing three stars, uh, three dice. Remember? X Wing hater. I'm still here. struggling with that. I'm not a hater. I just it just wasn't for me. But I can still recognise the absolute quality mm. product that it no, is. No, it's absolutely yeah. Yeah, I give it a three. Yeah, and you said that even if someone doesn't like Star Wars, they had to play it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's a, such a clever game. Still stand by that. <laughs> Alright, so that's the second good derail we've had tonight, James. This is, this is great. <laughs> no, no, you know what we see? Oh, we can never think of whip around questions. Oh, and we've just done two good ones already. So let's get right back into Shades So, details. Details. Okay. Made by our favourite uh, games company Warhammer Underworld Shades Fire. Two player game. Two to four. Two, but can be boosted to four. Yep. The, the starter box. Starter box, yep, is two. Is two. Uh, and we've got corn and what are your dudes called? Sigmarines. That's it. Sigmarines. What are the hot Sigmarines? What are they called? Sigmarines. <laughs> <laughs> Far on. Uh, Retails for ninety five dollars, but if you get it through our favourite uh, local game store, it's eighty dollars seventy five. And according to Mike. Uh, good luck trying to buy a copy because uh, they're all sold out. In yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, that's what I heard, but I'll um, have to double check. But and the boosters, boosters are still available. I think oh, uh, right. by the time this this podcast comes out, GW might very well be restocked. They yep. usually take about two weeks to get reshipments in. On the moment, there's two boosters being orcs and undead. Is it? Yep. And they retail for about fifty dollars or forty two fifty through the shop. Free movie games. That's right. Yep. Cool. If you're a KG shopper and nowhere to go. Mm. Yep. And recommend, sorry, uh, age range for the game. I'm not sure. What's on the box? Uh, it hasn't got an age range. I was just looking. That's oh, why I on the back? Yeah, on the back. Probably 12 and up, knowing GW. 12 and up, 12 plus. There you go. Which is fair. It's fair. Yeah. I yeah. think you, you could smack out a an intro game with, without cards. Yeah, without cards. And bring them into it later on, if yeah. they're savvy enough with it. Yep. But, um, yeah, it's the basic core mechanics are straightforward that I think any, you know, half switched on 12 year old could master it in no time. And the game in 30 minutes as well. Yeah. Run time. Which yeah. I'd agree with. Pretty tasty. And, and I can see it getting quicker. Once, yeah. once you got better at it, I think you could smash it. Well, I think they constitute a game as three, as three entire. Oh, right, really? Yeah. Which yeah. we'll cover deeper into the review, but yeah, I think that's three actual games. Yeah, okay. So, it's pretty solid. Far out. That's the hard and fast facts, folks. Nice. Good stuff. Shall we jump straight into the good stuff, Muddy? Aesthetics. The models. Yep. I knew you, you've been busting it. Yeah, because I, I, I would... I obviously, you can't have these all set up, but I, I would have loved to have seen the undead. Because when we pulled them apart, those models look really good. And they're the quick fit. 
Yeah, can we call them? One's out of the starter box. I didn't use a single bit of glue. I just, yeah. chuck, I just tested to see if it's possible. Yep. And sure is, I just squeezed them all together and they've... Yeah, you know, I'm, really, I'm really yeah. liking yeah. the models. And, and it is quick and easy to, to play. What I'm hoping is that they bring out some actual 3D terrain to be able to put essentially on the board uh, to give it that bit more feel rather than be, being less board game-ish. I don't think they will because the game is designed to be you just chuck down one of several game boards. Yeah. Maybe quick and easy like that, but I could see players who are very dedicated to it making own. their own balls. Yeah, which, I could, is, which would be sweet to see. Yeah, I'd, I'd definitely jump on that one because it wouldn't. It's that's the that's the size of the piece of terrain. You just plonk it down. Yeah, yeah, be, it'd be pretty easy yeah. to do. And I think so you, you should play really on the board with board. three the three hex wall. Basically, you yep. just cut a bit of MDF that shape. Yeah, bang whatever terrain you want on. Yeah, damn three D. But yeah, the, the, what comes in the box? Like I was really impressed by the models. Obviously, it's 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 Games Workshop. Like. So the models you get in the box: three Sigmarites, yeah, and three, five yep, corn, five corn guys. And I'm not sure how many's in this box. Seven, uh, done, seven, don't. seven fighters with all the cards, etc. And the orcs have four, so they're sort of in between. Yeah, uh, so far. So yeah, and it, in my opinion, again, they just they keep knocking these. Sculpts out of the park. They're they're gorgeous. The um yeah single the plastic new plastic ranges that GW are doing the the non multi part kits are just phenomenal in yeah. terms of their detailing and posing and whatnot. You lack the ability to make more models as you like, but you in, in trade off you get fantastic sculpts. That's super easy to put together. Yeah, which is great. And to me, that's a, that's a fair trade because I, I was never big on converting. Anyway, yep. like I know some people, that's the real appeal of the the model building. Well, You're a big kit basher look, from look, look way at the bash. complaints with uh, Malifaux. Great models, but seventy thousand pieces to to put a little yeah pig, pig together or something. You yeah, know? and you you see something like this, and you just like click click, click done click, done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's impressive. Like this is really impressive. Yeah, GW you know, have certainly mastered some sort of witchcraft in their miniature production in the last couple of years. Yeah, to, mm. to get those poses and stances and sculpts out of like three pieces. I don't know how they do it. Yeah, it's incredible. It's crazy. What do you reckon in the minis, Greg? Yeah, I have to say, I, I'm not a big fan of the uh, Sigmarite uh, aesthetic. They're a bit, bit static. Uh, I just, I never liked it from Age of Sigmar. Yeah. And, you know, the, the right. models of that in that genre. So. I reckon if they just had a rock, just maybe <laughs> could be leaping into the air. They've got, they they got up slabs of it. And the corn guys are corn, I guess. Um, corn marauder types. Corn marauders. So. Norsemen. I must yeah. admit, the orc, the orc dudes, I do, I do sort of like the look of the orc dudes. The undead don't really do much for me, but as an orc, orc player, I would, um, yeah, I like the orc, orc aesthetic. Yeah, that comes down to personal taste, opposed to any, anything, you know, wrong with that's the right. model well, That's right, well, that's the thing, isn't yeah. it? That's aesthetics at the end of the day. And I'm assuming um, the elves will be coming at some point. At some point, at some point yeah. yeah. So next on the list are uh, Skaven and um, Dwarves. So I'm keen to see Dwarves if they release pictures. Uh, not yet, but they're, they're the Fire Slayers, which are your old um, troll hunters. Yeah. So um, be nah, naked Dwarves with big beards, that'll well, be there. Because I wasn't <laughs> a fa- huge fan of the way they went with Dwarves in Age of Sigma, but I thought the Slayer-ish models were still pretty good. And the Blood Bowl dwarves are really nice mm. sculpts as well. But so. I, I, I quite like the steampunk dwarves, the, the, the Age of Sigma have. So I'm looking forward to them getting a release in Shades of Fire at some yeah. point. That's True, yeah. Thing. That's interesting because you said it's the Slayer style, not the mm. steampunkish ones. Mm. It's different. But personally, I think for my favourite out of all of them so far is the um, Sepulchral Guard, which are the undead. I think they're, they're my personal favourite. I think there's something really cool about how they manage to make skeletons look somewhat intimidating, opposed to just skeletons. Bunch of bones. Bunch yeah, of bones, yeah. And, they're a yeah. very horror movie look to them, which is fantastic. So, it's a bit different. And something we haven't covered, we've just covered the main game, the booster pack, which you mentioned whenever we were playing, it's, it's a one-stop shop. You buy it, that's it, you don't need anything else. Yeah, it's all self-contained, so you buy your your starter box, which has two crews in it, or you buy the booster packs, and that's all you need to buy, the crews. You don't need to buy any more models for that crew. It's um, self-contained, self-contained, which is something new for GW. Yeah. The first time they've done that. Oh, Blood Bowl teams might be the exception, but you still add and well, change. Well, even with Blood Bowl teams, Bowl. you normally got 11, and teams consist of 16. Well, there players, you go, so... so this you can- Definitely the, rooms, time, yeah. Yeah, definitely the first time they've done this sort of one pack, sh- one pack and you're ready to go s- yeah. style of gameplay, which is interesting. It's that X-Wing style marketing, as we t- discussed earlier. 
What about the the rest of the box? Again, it's it's quality all around. The board is fantastic. The yeah, cards the fantastic. Mm. The artwork's brilliant. Yeah. Like it's they've gone all out. I reckon it's really annoying me actually. T- tokens and cards, whole the whole nine yards. Mm. Like it's it's just when I'm ready to kick him out the door, they like, bring this back in. I think that I think one one complaint that I've got, and it's just me being picky. What they I think they missed. The missed opportunity Games Workshop had was to go down the collectible card approach for the cards, because none of the cards have really much in the way of interesting artwork, because, um, like many other games which use cards, has a lot of very nice artwork that you, so you can collect the cards as well. These cards, they got some artwork on They're there, functional. but it's very stock standard, generic, obviously pulled out of a fold or somewhere on a Games Workshop laptop and stuffed on the card. There's no real collectability to the cards, which is a bit of a missed opportunity, I think. Mm. They could have done that. Because seeing FFG are the masters of that, that's what they do with all their that, games. Yeah. But that's a small nitpicky thing. It's just, they function just fine. I guess, yeah, it depends when you're comparing to other games. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, and But yeah, in the box itself, you've got, you, get, you get two two double-sided boards. Uh, it assembles what a probably a two-foot by one-foot playing area. Yeah, thereabouts. Well, roughly, yep. yep. Yeah, which is quite large for a box game. Um, and you get, you get some unique dice, which are unique to this game. So this dice, this game uses uh, specialized dice, much like Fantasy Flight. Yeah, Fantasy Flight sort of sort of style. So there's no pips on the dice, which is interesting. So Jacob rolls half de- decently. Yeah, he, he did. So yeah. Don't you talk, Mister Crit Man. Bam. Yeah, and like I said, the, the token element again, it harks back to. Fantasy, I know we keep saying it, Fantasy Flight, but we've said it before. It's, it doesn't feel like a G-Dub game. No, that's right. It doesn't play like a G-Dub game, and it doesn't feel like one. I, I can't, if, if, if there was an FFG symbol on that box, a GW symbol, I wouldn't be surprised at all, but it's they're very heavily influenced. Are you suspecting corporate espionage? No, I think it's GW, or yeah, I think it's just GW just borrowing heavily from FFG's model, and they've done it right, so good on them. And the fact that it's sold volumes speaks a lot about speaks the game. Volumes, yeah. So, Mike, special guest, mm. extraordinaire. Mm. Give us a quick rundown about, uh, very briefly, All right. how the game plays. So it's pretty, uh, well, okay, it's, it's essentially it's 1v1 out of the box. Um, it's played over the best of three rounds, so best of two out of three. So you'll play multiple rounds in one sitting. That's how it's designed to play. But you could play it in just one quick 10-minute round, no worries at all. Uh, one team versus another team. Um, ultimately you're trying to score more victory points or glory as it's called in this game um, than your opponent and you t- tally up your total glory at the end of the end of the game and whoever has the most glory wins you know, killing each other is a large part of it but also tactical play and grabbing objectives and achieving certain goals is is another large part of the game as well so it's more than just beating punch each other in the face it's got to sure. be both hasn't it because killing killing you the your opponent obviously it, gets the glory it as does well. yep yep but yeah, your objective cards will also provide you a lot more, you know, tactical play as well, which is fantastic. And I think that's where a lot of the depth comes from. You, you mix of cards, I felt was really interesting that you had a deck for your ploys and upgrades, and you also had your, your deck for your objectives. And I, I, I really liked the random element that came in that you, each game or each round, you didn't necessarily know what you needed to achieve next. Yep. I, I really like that aspect of it that you couldn't just okay. For instance, if you are building a deck, you can't just cherry pick the objectives that you want, which you know you can. Other games like Malifaux kind of jump to mind that you can set up your crew with these objectives in mind, and that's what you're going to play. Whereas this one, you kind of have to, you know, have a little bit more. You're cycling through your cards a bit though, too, trying to get something that's achievable as well. You yeah. are, yeah. And the but the cards are uh, aren't unlimited. Once you once you cycle out of all your cards, they don't get reshuffled back yeah. in your deck. So yeah. once you if you burn for your objective cards early, They're you haven't gone. achieved any of them, you're in trouble. Yep. Which is a good balancing point. Mm. I feel. Yep. Yeah, I think it works really well. Yeah. And the custom dice we've mentioned it, but yay, all games manufacturers out there should heed that warning and just remove dice from their games, a la ABC, uh, or just make custom dice. Yep. So, yeah, I'm a big fan of that. What about organized play, Mike? So, I'm getting from this product that Games Workshop are seeing a big opportunity here for organized play. Yeah, they definitely borrowed heavily from the card game tournament organized play scene, where the whole best out of three round, best two out of three rounds, um, that's how all 
card game tournaments are run. And even the game itself has been designed to play within the time format of a card game tournament. So they're definitely sort of tapping into a whole nother sort of organised play sort of area. Um, and the fact there's no... The large part of that is there's no points values or anything like that for your crews. It's just a set thing, so you don't have to worry about building your crew. Um, but it does have the deck building. And that's definitely them sort of leaning towards, again, that card game, tournament, organised play sort of scene. So you think they're trying to possibly get some of those traditional card players to come across uh, and maybe try I don't think something with some Yeah, matches. I think that's ultimately their goal. But they're never going to complete, compete with, say, Magic the Gathering or whatnot. But I think it'll definitely get its own niche market, that's yeah. for sure, of players. The fact is, you know, you don't have to be a hardcore war gamer to get into this game. You buy the box set, and really, that's all you ultimately need. Um, you're not investing hundreds and hundreds of dollars or painting, you know, painting, of miniatures, yeah, exactly. List building, the whole. That's it. So it's definitely they're definitely aiming at multiple demographics of gamers, that's for sure. And how much depth would you say is in the? Because I mean, we we played with uh, pre-constructed decks. So how much? Well, those decks you played were actually decks I constructed. They, ah. were, they weren't now the they weren't the default decks. They're actually ah. tweaked a little bit, so they were functioning a little bit more um, economically, I guess. I guess you could say for for the decks. Um, Sigma, I've got them tweaked out pretty well, and Corn, I've just started tweaking with theirs. But even then, their default decks run fairly well as well. But they do give you spare cards in the box for deck building, which is fantastic. So you don't you're not stuck running with the pre-designed decks. And how many cards in the, in the starter? Oh, I should, I should well, read it. too short, to be honest. Uh, 96 upgrade ply and objective cards doesn't say specifically. Yes, yeah, so it gives you a fair mix and there's some corn specific ones and there's some Sigma specific ones and universal ones. Um, and each of the booster boxes, sorry, each of the expansion boxes for the new crews cards. come with more universal cards as well. Right. So you can Sort of like X-Wing, you can dip into those. Oh, and pretty clever. Oh, so if you know, nice. Even if you didn't want to play Orcs, you might you want need cards. To buy it's going to be some cards, you're only going to find that Orc box. Clever. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So that's how they get that sort of pretty cross-pollination clever. between the boxes. Yep. But, you're not, but you don't need to run out there and buy it, so... Mm. Which is cool. That's it. That's really interesting. I showed you guys that card from the Blood Bowl yeah. today. Yep. Um, and th- this... Card, a special play card, is basically if you score in the second half and you're losing, you get awarded as many points as you are losing by, which is crazy. Wow. Yeah, it had to be in turn six plus or something yeah. of the second half. Yeah. Yeah, so it was like the old on the playground thing, next, next, next goal try, wins. next goal wins, but it was a draw. Yeah, brings it up to a draw. Yeah. Which uh, scares me a little bit, because it's like, well... That's a really powerful card in an expansion. It's, it's really powerful to get a draw, though. Well, if you're losing by three, because you've had Wood Elf smash you for the first half, but you've you got your dwarves on the line. In Instead of six, losing 3-1, you can pull out a three or draw. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah, play, play it in turn six. But you still got to be, be able to score. If you've copped a belting... Yeah, but at least, so least you've you got the option. Yeah. But, it's yeah. an option. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. It's, um, see, and the reason I showed it to you guys today is because I was like, well, if this is what they're pulling out in Blood Bowl, are we worried about it for this? About it for this. Well, going off what we saw tonight, I, I'm not, we, we talked power creep at one point. Mm-hmm. You know, that could be something. That's a typical G dub sort of thing. But at, as far as it, just straight out of the box here, and you've had a look at the undead. And quick, you didn't, you didn't free, see yeah. anything that's too broken in there. So, so, so far, it looks okay. It looks okay. Yeah. But it's an, it's an, it's a, I think power creep in any game is inevitable. One that introduces new cards and upgrades and stuff like that continuously. It's, you can't escape it. Yep. Um, like, you know, going back to X-Wing as another example, because I think it's the best example. When they want, when they release a new shiny ship, it always has one or two awesome cards that makes you run out there and buy it. And it either breaks the meta for a few months until FFG if they cure it, or people just work a way around it. So I don't think it's necessarily, if they do release one powerful card, I don't think it's going to shatter the world and destroy the game. It'll just change the way the meta plays. The dynamics. Yeah. 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 And that's, that's the same for all card games. Card games are really powerful for that, because you'll get one particular meta, and it'll stay strong for a long time. Everyone's playing that one particular combo or build of around that one card and you get one camp which is all about playing that card and one camp is all about mm. countering that card and then it's all rendered irrelevant 
after a few months when a new set comes out or an FAQ comes out and changes it. So it's nothing they can't fix if there is a problematic card, especially in a game like this where it's very easy to fix just one card with an FAQ. Yep. And um, what about uh, G Dub? Are there like I, I'm a bit out of the loop? Are there? Is there like a for- forum or is there, you know, uh, some sort of global group that's yeah? What's the this? what's the G Dub level of support for this sort of stuff? For the Shade Spire? Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I'm not too sure. They, they, they've got, they've improved their social sort of media sort of aspect of things, but I don't think there's any particular like organized play or anything like that. Not for it yet. Um, but who knows? Cause again, card games and X-Wing and whatnot all have organized play. Mm. And if, if GW are serious about stepping into that market, then they have to step up for organized mm. play. And if they do organized play, then, then, they, then they have to do special reward cards and all sorts of things. And I don't think GW will do that, to be honest, but it's a big investment, time and resources. It is, it is. If the game proves popular enough, then it could very well be the case. Yeah. When so, when did it come out? Oh, about a month ago now. Yeah. So yeah, this is early days, guys. Mm. This is the freshest review we've ever done. Yeah, this is early days. <laughs> so let's, let's not kid ourselves. We are, whew, we are on, on the, the money. finger on the pulse for this one. Usually that's our thumb up our ass. But, well, you likewise, know. can't even get it, apparently. Yeah, apparently it's, um, it's getting pretty hard to find now. So which is, I saw my last box today. So I'll talk to Games Workshop and see if I get more. What do they call them, the lizards in the, the Age new of Sigma wor- days? No idea. Oh, yeah, that'd be interesting. A lizard yeah. box, a few skinks. Would the skinks even make it in? Seraphins. Seraphons. That's it, seraphins, yeah. Well, be, yeah, that's the other point. It'd be interesting to see how far they take the expansions. Mm. Well, if you look at the naming structure on the box, it has Warhammer... Underworlds, Shadespire. Yeah. So which tells me Shadespire is, is going to be probably the first of their range. Much like Magic the Gathering and the card game does, they have they will release in cycles, and each cycle will have its own name. Yeah. So I think the next set we'll get after this will be called something else, but have compatible rules and tiles. Yeah. So there could be, an, for example, an Amazon-style expansion pack where oh, it introduces... Right. Foresty tiles, something like that, but it'll all be interchangeable. Um, because you look at the cards in the box, there's actually, the, all the cards are numbered up to 400. So there's actually 400 cards already been made for Shades Buyer. And once all those cards are out, because that'll be the Skaven and Dwarves, that's only about half the cards until the set's completed. So there's at least another two crews to come out after the Skaven and Dwarves come out. And that'll be this box set complete. So that's six. That's six at that six, point. Six, six crews. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, then after that, I suspect what they're going to do is release another core box with two more crews in it. Yep. And start the cycle again under a new name. That's what I think they're going to so do. So Warhammer Underworld, something, something, something cool. else. Yep. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, it's got such potential to have legs. It does. If it, it all it all comes down to GW keeping those legs up, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's really fascinating. I mean, for someone, for myself, that's just trying to get my head around card games at the moment, it, looking at this and seeing it, like a, the hybrid that it's uh, the adopting is, it's amazing. Mm. So, well, and, and I guess the other point is um, that we haven't touched on the models are completely uh, compatible with Age of Sigmar. Well, the very released data cards or whatever they call unit entry cards for Age of Sigma with these models. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So it's as a, comp- PDF, as a PDF even, download. Even more so. Yeah, so they're really tapping into that cross market sort of yeah. dynamic. Yeah. Which wh- why wouldn't you? You know, it's bloody smart. Yeah, we really need to play Age of Sigma sometime. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> you don't think so? I don't know. Well, it's probably it's a lot better game than it used to be. It's definitely not the point of fantasy. That you know, obviously that are replaced. Yeah. But with the general general's handbooks and everything now, which introduce points, values, structured scenarios, and missions, it's a pretty different. It's a different game now. Mm-hmm. It's quite popular as well. So I thought, very much so. Yeah, I flicked flick through the general's handbook and it's like, oh, that's actually half decent. But right, it's it's still a watered down one of fantasy. It's still very basic, but it's the way it seems to be. It seems, mm-hmm. it seems to be drawing a whole new fresh market of people. So I'm keen to check it out at CanCon. See what the game's mm-hmm. like. See the numbers. I know the Warrior Lodge at Kalanga are playing it heaps, that, that Nath edition. Yeah. yeah. Shades of Fire. Um, I don't know. It seems to attract a whole younger demographic of players by the looks of it. Yeah, well, I mean, at BrizCon, it was the most popular game, I would say. Yeah, I think so, yeah. 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 It was crazy. More so than 40, but 40k hadn't 
the new edition hadn't dropped. Yeah. So, yeah, it was it was very popular. Cool. You are listening to Power Stance Gamers, and now this. All right, so we'll move on to uh, the other thing, and we've already kind of touched on it a little bit. Gents, is uh, we like to have a chat about innovation in games. And, um, Mike, I might throw it to you first. Mm. What, are, what are your thoughts? Is this a particularly innovative product, or like, are they doing new stuff? Or it feels like they're just, not just, I shouldn't say just, have they grabbed a lot of elements from other areas and well, put it in a nice box? And there's nothing wrong with a, that, it works. It's, it works. It's, it's definitely innovative for GW. Yeah, that's yeah. for sure. If Fantasy Flight can I just, can I just say that it's nothing wrong with that if it works coming from the Mantic fanboy? Had to yeah, point that out. I think it, it, yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's 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 definitely innovative for Games Workshop. And if FFG produced a carbon copy of this game, I wouldn't be surprised. This is standard FFG cleverness. But I would definitely say it's innovative in the fact it's going to bring new people to miniature gaming, just you know models you build and assemble and paint. Um, but in terms of like its gameplay, yeah, it's innovative in the fact that it blends cards and miniatures together. But I wouldn't say that's anything too new. Interesting. Yeah, I I, I agree. Like I, I love the way that it brings the two together, and I think it's huge potential to, to bring in new players to to the game. This you could give someone as a gift, and you could you, you know it could be a real gateway for someone. Yeah. And they could just basically they could play this one box set forever. They don't need to go out and buy the expansions. That's it. A young, yeah. a young kid growing up. This would be a great game for them to just bash out with their friends at the, at the, at the coffee table. Yep. Do you think there's more, going to be more of this sort of stuff coming out? From GW? Yeah. They've dipped wow. their toes in. It seems like they know... They've, they've I learned think, something from that dipping and maybe that's... I, I think Necromunda's going to be their big, yeah. big like, next project they're doing in terms of a completely new way of making games. For GW, anyway. Yeah. So. It sounds like I think Necromunda, though... It's different in that, I, you know, get where it's 100% a get where game. Whereas at Necromunda, that's harking back to the old days and getting a lot of the old gamers who have buggered absolutely, off, had absolutely. families, or just left the genre altogether. Mm-hmm. But they'll, they'll, through one way or another, they will hear that Necromunda's back on the scene and that will get them inevitably back in. Cash in on the nostalgia. Definitely. So it's, it's gonna, it's gonna get the old and the new. You've yep. got the new kids. On the block, we have no idea about Necromon, but mm. I've probably heard about it. Oh, yeah, well, I've never, I've heard about it, never played it. Yep. And all of a sudden it's going to come out, and they're going to go, oh, yes, let's do it. And same with the old crew. Yeah. And if, if Necromon is successful, I could see it sort of having a weird sort of um, reverse sort of style of attracting players. It'll, initial players will be the old guys who know what Necromon is. They'll be your main purchases of it. Yeah. And after a few sure. months, after people who have never really played Necromunda before catch wind of what this game is, see some battle reports on YouTube and stuff like that, I think they might go, oh, well, I might dip my toe into that pool as well and purchase Necromunda. That's how I see Necromunda sales going. Because yeah. everyone I know that I've, that's expressed interest to me in Necromunda so far are all old school people who love Necromunda when it came back out in 1995. That's the thing. But whereas this is probably half the price, it's going to be half the price. Well, no, Necromunda is quite cheap. It's 150 Right. For that massive box and yet two crews of 10 models, fully plastic models. Yeah, okay. I could All the cards, I, terrain and rules and everything. I was kind of 50-50 with Necromunda, but after seeing this in gameplay, if they, I'm actually more tempted now to go with the Necromunda now because, oh, really? of, because of this. Oh, because of this? Yeah. Because you know, they, they're obviously setting up a new quality standard. Yeah, it's, it's, they've, they've shown that, that there's other formats that they can borrow Use, utilize to create a product like that, which I never would have. But how many years thought has G Dub done a Mantic? <laughs> well, I I don't have a problem yeah, with that. I'm, well. I'm actually saying they that's what they've kind of done. Well, what I'm what I'm from Fantasy yeah. Flight. What I I'm personally think. Sorry, what, what I'm sort of coming up back to thinking is G Dub used to be the masters of the box game. Yeah, way back. When. Off the shelf, pick it up, plonk it down, pull it out, off you go. Okay. Before they realise that shit, if we can make people keep buying miniatures, that's where the market is. But I, I disagree now. I think if you can give a complete package to someone ready to play, that's that's where the market is. People are tired of just buy, constantly buying miniatures. Well, the know? market's gone back. Yeah, and they've just shown that they they still know how to do it. Well, they're releasing. They've, they've done, they're, I think they found a perfect hybrid. 
Like you've got the box, which contains everything you need, and then booster boxes, which contain everything you need. But it's, so, but it's even better it's than, in a, in a way, it's, is this not better than Fantasy Flight in another way? Because I can take this, and I can use it in another game as well, if I choose to go take it. Fantasy yeah. Flight don't really have that in any other format. If you buy X-Wing, yeah, that's if, true. You, if you buy X-Wing ships, they're only good in X-Wing. To a degree, point. people, a lot of people use them in their role-playing system. Okay, so role-playing, but but there is quite G-dubs, a niche sort of yeah. Yeah. example. G-Dub's yeah. basically saying, hey, you can play this, and it's next. To, it's cheap as. Mm. And if you want, you can use these miniatures in this other game as well. So it's two for one in a yeah. way. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's pretty clever. It's very clever. Mm. Almost too clever for G-Dub, <laughs> which we <laughs> keep <laughs> saying. <laughs> it's like, we're still sort of sitting around the table going, is this really a Games Workshop game? It, Apparently. Well, it's got the logo there. It says it on the box. You try putting Games Workshop logo on something that's not know, Games Workshop, see how quick that lasts. Flight would get away with putting Warhammer all over it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, from, from an innovation point of view, the one thing I struck me, and you hit the nail on the head whenever we are setting up, is is the board mm. and the way you lay out your your forces. Ah, yeah. good. Can, yeah, that was good. And I think, because the, the, there's two boards and they're, you know, essentially you can, they're rectangles and the way you do the layout of the of the game player, you can either put them end to end, so have an elongated play area, but you can also offset that elongated play area, so it can be a bit off kilter, or you can play them side by side, and again, you can still have them off kilter. And I thought that was pretty. And again, the fact that your troops had to be placed on certain uh, hex hexagonals, I thought was very clever because it, again, it's limiting where you set up. Um, and adding that extra level of strategy, which does. was which, not expecting at all, which is proved when you see how much of a difference the Sigma uh, yeah. on, the, on the long board posed are on the on the wide board. Yeah, yeah. The players are completely tried. different. Which we tried. The games are completely to see different. How yeah, yeah. How that played out. Uh, so to me, if you're talking about innovation, you know the the, the rest of the, the the way the game is, the cards and the tokens and the dice, even yeah, we've seen it all before, but the the boards? No, that's you're right. That's the board, the board is clever. Pro- yeah, the board is probably the most innov- innovative thing about that box. It's interesting how you can just go. Well, I, I won the roll off to place boards. It's yep. like, and you chuck the boards out however you like, and that can really control how that you play. You had three players, or even go up to four, and if you had all came with your boards, how the heck does that work? Because if you could put them all, it's got off a center. It's, it's got a special layout in the book how to set up. Oh, right. Yeah. So you could could you put them off center at all? Or? Uh, not really. There's no. a special. That would be way. interesting. Yeah. But even having the ability to put blocking terrain down in front of your yeah. opponent, that sort of stuff, yeah. I can yeah. see. Well, actually, speaking of another point of innovation we should bring up is um, probably easily overlooked is all the objective cards in this game are written for not only two players, but three and four players. So, yeah, unlike most other board games or miniature games, multiplayer beyond two players, it's sort of just tacked on. You can do it, but it doesn't necessarily work well, or the game might break. GW have written all the objective cards with more than two players in mind, so you'll have a win condition or a, a score value on a card, which will change depending on how many players you've got. Which is quite an interesting aspect to it. Mm. It proves they've obviously sat down and test played it. They actually it. thought about it. They actually thought about multiplayer. Yeah. Which yeah. Is, and not many games do that. Not many miniature games do that. So, which is interesting. All right. Is there anything else we want to talk about? Up to ratings. Yeah. This will be really interesting. Yeah, I, I'm very intrigued, and I'm going to host prerogative. I'm going to go last on this. Oh, I'm going second last because my well, I think Mike should go first. Mike yeah. should definitely go first. He's a guest. Come on, buddy. Well, I'm going to give it... It's tough. I really, really enjoy it. I've played a fair bit of it. Um, How many I, games have you played? Oh, probably about 15 or so games. Oh. So a fair few. Um, mainly because you smash them out so quickly. I yeah. think that's another point to yeah. mention that a one single ra- game or turn... Or, one single playthrough takes about 10 minutes if both players know what, they know what they're doing which is great if you want to smash out a real quick game you've got, you got half an hour or so to play it's good filler it's good filler that's yeah. right it's a great um, filler game yeah yeah which is rare in a miniature game whilst keeping the depth of the miniature game see when Greg buys this at CanCon we can just play a couple of rounds between yep. games of infinity it's perfect buys at CanCon yeah I'm not going to go to I'm not going to boo you that's right all of are you going to Can't Call, Mike? Mm. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. So, pull my finger around and get tickets. Yeah, awesome. 
Yeah, okay. And yeah. you're going to Capcom, aren't you, Chuggy? Yeah, yeah. I've actually buy my Infinity entry ticket. They haven't sold out yet, have they? Nah, 16th of January. All hey, right. uh, what are you doing, buddy? You want to count on? Got my wife's 40th. <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, you've played about 15 games. Yeah, which is more than us, because we've played take. two. Yep. 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 I, I won one then, too. I haven't played any expansions yet, nor have I played oh, any Greg, multiple. Greg, how many games did you win? Yeah, not many. Uh, one and a half? A weird sort of... Should weird we, we, should, we should count aggregate score. Over the two legs. How do you mean? Well, I got 11 in one and four in the next, so that was 15. That doesn't count for shit. 50-50. Away goals, baby. So, oh, wait, wait, wait. hit us. How many dice? Where do you, what do you give it? Without playing the, the extra cruise or multiplayer, I would probably give it... I'll probably give it five. Five, five dice. Five dice. Wow. Oh, wow. Straight, yeah. straight out of the traps. Boom. Yeah. Done. It's yeah. a fun game and it's got so many pros that they rapidly outweigh the cons. Yep. And the cost is? If you buy it off the GW shelf, 95 bucks. And you're selling it for? Uh, $80.75. So, you're not it's, throwing out too much cash. To it's a small home. investment for a game that can bring you hours of fun without even needing to buy a booster box. Yep. All right. All right. It's a Greg star. What do you reckon? Oh, okay, to me. See how I did that? Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> Smooth. It's just a tough it. one. It's a tough one. I do, I do like it. I do like it. I think in yeah, the board, the board layout really, really got me. I think that's very, very clever. I think um, there's there's lots of gameplay and time you can invest in that. But I'm going to give it a four. I'm going to give it a four because I'm not, I'm not. That keen, I want to go out and buy a copy tomorrow. That's where I'd, I'd balance it. To, for a five, uh, you know, I'd want to own a copy. Mm. What's there? Hmm. All right, so. But, 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 oh, there's a few but. buts. You need, you need to justify your rating. You apparently. do need to justify yeah. your rating. So you yeah. just. Is it just you don't. It doesn't grab you enough to run out and buy yeah, one? Yeah, I have to say, it comes to the models. I love the gameplay. I think the gameplay is very clever. Like the cards and the objectives and where you can swap it out. I really like that. But the mo- the models just grab me. I just I don't like the models. Maybe when dwarves come out. Dwarves. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. But in saying that, if you compare those models to say the plastic models you get in any board game. Oh, for sure. Like it's you can't. It's chalk cheese. Like absolute. Like it's it's G dub through and through. Mm. You know. It's, and you said that it's it's cool. But then look at Space Hulk models. I mean, that's kind of like a, a board game, and Space Hulk models are stellar. There for the time, sensational. Yeah. Oh, Space Hulk, yeah, Space yeah, Hulk, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Space um, I mean, that's only a few years old. Like all of G Dub's miniatures are going to be stellar, aren't they? But I, I just they just don't grab me. I don't I don't buy into it. I don't buy into that. It's just not enough aesthetic. aesthetic. Yeah, that's fair enough. Age Sigma does have a very certain flavour to its yeah. aesthetic. But yeah. maybe, as Jacob said, when dwarves come out and we see other races, maybe elves, maybe mm. maybe right. might grab me. Yeah. But the game player is, is rock solid. Mr. Muddy. Mm, I am so torn. Can I give a half? No. Full full dice. Is it full? Is it? Yeah, I tried to give a half once and got told no. Yeah. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah you did. did. Oh, I know. Undead. The undead are Look really... At the undead. Look at that. I've got a fat got a cloak that. and everything. Just give it five. Off you go. Because oh. you're, you're, you're going to buy it. <sighs> it's got a... All right. A name, so Cool guy. Oh, I know. I That's know. a great name. Oh, Mike's just... Oh, fuck it. Five. <laughs> fuck it. What was that? It's so easy. Your mic dropped out again, money. I, yeah. I missed that. He, it's so oh, easy. Mike's in me fucking ear in. <laughs> fuck it's got, hey, it's <laughs> got works in the game. The game we just played, isn't it? Five. It's got skeletons, so therefore it's an automatic five. Yeah, he's put the skeletons in front of me. I'm like... Oh. He he's a like, master salesman. As soon as he... Master salesman. Skeletons in front of me. He knows I get a fat. So it's like <laughs> five. Jerk. <laughs> yeah, well, if... Oh, um, so, just the box content, the, the the initial box by itself, uh, with the models. Like the models are great. It, it this, you know this is G Dub modeling with Fantasy Flight packaging. Packaging, yeah, right. And game. Yeah, you put mm. that two together. That is a pretty good winning combination. So in 
It's almost enough to make you think G-Dub should partner up with Fantasy Flight. Or <laughs> I've just never understood well, how, that, how that fell apart. But anyway. Well, how, did, how come G-Dub never released a single FFG game with a Games Workshop model in it? They could, yeah. they could have done yeah. that. But, wow. I, I, I'd, give, I'd give the initial box set a four. I, I agree with Greg. Um, I'm not as big in the aesthetics of, say, the, the Sigmarines and, and the, um, the Norsemen, okay? But you put these undead in front of me, <laughs> yeah, and it's an auto five, and that turns your semi to a to a rager. Yeah, I'm yeah. fully jizzing all over the place. So, you know, once and you said it yourself, like once the dwarves or the elves or something like like, and I'm thinking uh, Seraphon, whatever lizards. Uh, once that stuff comes out, that's that's only going to make this game even better. Mm. So the initial box I'll go four, but realistically it's a five because this is not how it works. You end up getting the faction that goes with you know your aesthetic so five for me wow I'm going just on the box itself yep because that's what I'm looking at and it's a five. Oh, oh, five. Oh. it is it, it's it's a perfectly packaged game that's that's it he always holds back over it. Even, even if the minis weren't as good as they are, even if they weren't, I think I'd still give it a five. Yep. Because to me, it's, you know, you know gameplay over here. Extraordinary. Like, it's, the rules are so tight, the yep. way the objectives work, the way the cards work, the whole dynamic, the board, even even the board. It's just setting up the board has a layer of... Tactical. Tactic. Yep. It's to it. it. It's it's so good. And, you know, we said at the start, you could take it easy, take out the cards, just set up one board and have a bash with kids. Yep. Totally valid way to play it, I think. On the other end, you can you can hit that super. That's a really good point, too. With, if you just wanted to get the kids to play it, you just literally take the cards out and you could probably just do it with that. Like until they glass. get used to the... Yeah, until they get used to, you know, the card mechanics and whatnot. Yep. And I know not all of our listeners are worried about whether the kids can play the game or not, but um, well, we we do. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> starting to get that way. Yeah, you, you guys are already there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I think it's great. And as I said, like you could give this to a non-gamer, and they could play it. Mm. It's got a lot. I think I know what to get my brother for his, for Christmas. Ooh. Crack. Yeah, crack. <laughs> <laughs> but after he smoked that crack, we're going to play Shades Five. <laughs> <laughs> No, so definitely, it, it's five for me, all the way. All right, so do you want to review what your your last review? Greg? Well, the, give it a four. Yeah, yeah. No, because I, uh, Mike Peter. hit the nail on the head. I don't, I'm not a, on him. I'm, I'm not a I'm fan gonna, of I'm the... Really dwarves are in the uh, I'm yeah. still not a fan of the Age of Sigmar world. And this is... Yes, and you're right. You are 100% right. And I said that. The gameplay is amazing. Again, you know, for somebody who's, who's working on games and whatnot, it's it's... Fantastic! It's yeah, so yeah. smart. It's so clever, it, and I, we've said it time and time again. It is not a G Dub typical game. It's not. It's as if someone from FFG has turned on them and, and uh, joined the dark side. Very clever. Mm-hmm. So rave reviews. Yeah, rave reviews. Go out and buy it. Yeah, yeah. yeah honestly, if you can find it. Yeah, if you can find, if you can it, find it, it. Yeah. Honestly, though, I think the biggest. I think Greg sort of hinted at it. Um, the biggest stigma it's got for a lot of the older, more, you know, veteran gamers is the fact that it is Sigma. And yeah. Sigma is a bit of a salt in the wound. It's a dirty word. It is. But you look at the boxes, where's the word Age of Sigma? sigma. Anyway, that, that's right. It's very. It's not on there. Yeah, but they're not, they're not fooling you by not putting it Well, there. putting a Sigma <laughs> in right <laughs> in the freaking in the cover. on it. It's like, yeah. you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> What did you do to my movement? You trace? Blew, up, blew up my world. You blew up the fucking world. Jer- I reckon they would have been torn as well. Thinking the starter box, do we put Sigmarines in it? Because they're oh, the flagship of Age of Sigma. Would have been a round table discussion on that one. Yeah, we but at the same time, will they put, will it put people off having it? Sigmarines yeah. in it. Um, but you know, doesn't what? bother me. I love them. I think they look great. We're what just talking it? about um, Age of Sigma at BrizCon. Yeah. Yeah. Some people are going. Yeah. People so playing. in some regards, they're, yeah. they're the ones that are probably picking this up as well because well, they can use these minis in in Age of Sigmar as well. Well, personally for myself, I I because I, I really I really like the Age of Sigmar um, um, aesthetic. Aesthetic, yeah. Like, but I hate the Age of Sigmar rules personally. Like, just appeal to me as a gamer. Like, this is a great Shade Spy is a great way to get into the Age of Sigmar 
aesthetic without having to invest in a game system that I don't really want to play. Because I love the look of the new dwarves. Um, I, love, I like the Sigma and I like the way the chaos stuff they're producing. So it's a cool way to get into that without having to play Age of Sigma. Another point of, you know, another point for it, essentially. It yeah. kind of works both ways. It yeah. helps you not play Age of Sigma and it also helps you take the models and go play Age of Sigma. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Cool. Just so many levels of cleverness. Mm. All right, gentlemen. We might leave it there. All right. Thank you very much for contributing to the discussion and big shout out to Big Mike. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I can't say it like that, so big I'll let, Mike. let him do it. Thanks, There's guys. a rapper called Big Mike. How was it? Yeah. yeah Back in the day, he was from the convicts. That was me. Ah, was it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Before we go, we need to do a big shout out to our Patreon backers, including uh, Gideon Limp, who's jumped on board this month. Great work, guys. Jeez. While we're speaking about Patreon, oh. if you love what we do, and you want us to keep doing it, and you have a spare dollar in your pocket. Or on your credit card. Or on your wife's. Yeah. <laughs> or on your secret gambling one. Don't yeah. forget, yeah. yeah the se- <laughs> that's secret gambling one. Oh, that is so true. Feel free to uh, log on to Patreon. Look for us uh, at uh, patreon.com forward slash Power Sense Gamers. And um, help support the show. Yeah, help support the show. Uh, from as little as $1 a month. It makes Helps, a big difference uh, to us. Might help Greg get a Uber. Maybe <laughs> can. <laughs> Otherwise, we are on Twitter. Officially on Twitter, we now have a Twitter account. Muddy, how many tweets have you sent? I didn't. <laughs> Great are you work. We've also, yeah, <laughs> Twitter at. <laughs> what is our Twitter fucking handle? <laughs> he doesn't even know. Shut up. <laughs> Hashtag PSG bitches. <laughs> Just Where like getting it? an Uber, hey. Just like getting an Uber. Yeah. It's that easy. There's a reason why <laughs> I've got to this stage in my life not needing an Uber. Yeah, but it's like dinosaurs. And then they <laughs> get away. Yeah. They were the apex <laughs> yeah. once. I was like, oh, you know, mm. now I'm fucking dead. Ra <laughs> 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 rah, rah oh, fuck. <laughs> All right, catch us on Twitter at PS Gaming Podcast. Okay. Our email address is powerstancegamingpodcast at gmail.com. I know Muddy's waiting eagerly for that. I'm you can here on send the your uh, telegrams to to Greg. Yep. Or he's also sitting by the uh, straight post, <laughs> the, the wireless, waiting for the the nightly bulletin <laughs> the from fu- the front lines. The Morse code. <laughs> The telegraph. Oh, here comes Sammy the pigeon <laughs> with the mail. <laughs> Fucking wait up! He's got a little cap on. Wait up! I smoke signals. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, he's a modern man. He's got fox tail. Oh, <laughs> Look, those Indians are saying six star review. <laughs> And, of course, subscribe to us on iTunes and Podbean. Thank you very much for listening. Gentlemen. I'll fucking see you later. (laughs) Hey, Greg. Good night. (sighs) Thank you for listening to Power Stance Gamers, the number one place for tabletop venture. You know you love us. See you soon. It's eternal and mixed well on the track once again. Killing it, uh. Uh. T-Dot to Munch, y'all connection. Bump resurrection. Ha!